So uh, Spikes Inc. is here and they have a new kind of browser, one that's going to keep you hyper secure. I keep getting all these stupid spam messages on Twitter because some of you out there are clicking on their little links with a little message and getting hacked and your friends are all getting these stupid messages. He, he has, Spikes has an idea of how to solve that problem for all of us. Mm -hmm. You can see it right now. Who are you? I'm Brandon Spikes, and uh, I was the first IT guy at PayPal and at SpaceX. So uh, for the last 15 years, I've been uh, designing and architecting computer systems and, and information security and that kind of thing. And uh, now you're building, it's not just a browser, is it? It's really a technology that can see where attacks are going to come from? Good point, yeah. I mean, it's not just a browser. It's uh, the solution to the biggest cybersecurity threat facing enterprises right now. Uh, and so it's much more than just a browser. It's, it's a huge, huge uh, solution and uh, uh, has the potential to make a big impact on the world in general and our trust in electronic systems. And uh, you know how much of the current use of computing is done through a browser today is, is, uh, is mind boggling. I can make up some threats because I get a thousand spam messages a day yeah. and a lot of those are uh, phishing attacks. So mm -hmm. a lot of social attacks, you know, trying to convince you to that I'm Wells Fargo sure. or Apple Computer, and you got to put your password in here so I can help you out, right? And only I'm not Apple Computer or, or PayPal. I got a bunch of PayPal ones, but it's sort of funny. Yep. That's one kind of attack. Then we get the Twitter kind of attack where you click a link and all of a sudden it's running code and, and stealing all your friends' email addresses and Twitter exactly, addresses yeah. and sending out a lot of spam on your behalf, right? Uh, what other kinds of attacks have you seen? Because you're in the middle of this. And yeah, exactly. I'm yeah. only off to the those, side. Yeah, those kind of social attacks that target consumers and individuals are obviously a really big problem for the world as well. Um, uh, but you know, I think sort of the more uh, dangerous attacks are the ones that are targeting the enterprises into intellectual property and trying to install malicious software behind corporate firewalls. Uh, so those are the ones that uh, pose the much bigger risk, and uh, those are the ones that. Uh, are completely stopped in their tracks by uh, the technology that I've created. Uh, and, and as well, um, we do protect uh, the consumer individual and their online social profiles, which I think could be useful for you, certainly. Yeah. Uh, but in general, I mean, uh, the technology we've created just puts a stop to all that drive-by malware and all those phishing attacks and watering hole attacks and all these browser-based attacks. So at Rackspace, we care deeply about this because if you get yeah. it, if you, if you get inside our firewalls and then you're able to mess with our customers and all of a sudden our brand sure. just evaporates, right? If, if you actually got in that far. Um, so how do you stop that, that attack of somebody sending an email and getting me to click on it and all of a sudden I'm loading code and mm -hmm. I didn't even see the code load and I, sure. boom, my machine is compromised and now my friend's machines are getting compromised. We saw this in the 1990s yeah. with little you know, exactly. malicious viruses, but this is far deeper at this point. How do you protect against this? Well, you, you have to start with the understanding that browsers cannot be secured fundamentally. They're, the way they operate is kind of unique from other applications and that by their very design, they go out and talk to untrusted hosts and run code written by other people. And uh, that's just the routine of how they're used. And so if you come to that conclusion that, gee, you know, to run a browser is to run malware, um, then uh, you can see that, that uh, uh, the only way to really be safe is to not run that browser, right? Like take it off your computer or, or don't run it, disconnect the cable, you know, then you're really safe. Uh, but short of becoming offline, um, the, the right solution is put that browser on another computer and use it remotely, like a remote desktop kind of thing. Uh, and, and of course, we've made it really usable and focused a lot on that usability. But um, in essence, that's how it works. It's running the actual browser and all that code is running outside the firewall and off your network and off your computer and so you're isolated by uh, and true truly hardware isolated from any threat that it could pose sounds great in theory but sure. uh, we have bring your own device to work mm -hmm. now i mean i stood in line for this device on friday the <laughs> it the it people at rackspace have no clue this thing exists and all of a sudden i'm connected to that wi-fi hotspot Yep. So how yeah, do you, it certainly poses a risk. Well, IT doesn't have control anymore. 
Yeah. So how do you convince people to use this browser instead of yeah. the Safari Great browser on this thing or the Chrome browser on that thing? You know. Well, I'm excited by the future prospect that this browser uh, can can become. You know, it's it's able to be more superior just by uh, in thanks to its technology, but um, it, it's able to be more superior to uh, Chrome or Safari or Firefox, uh, given enough time and development on that. Uh, but the issue is really, the issue at hand is, is the threat that's facing enterprises by all this. And so uh, when it comes to enforcing these policies on people who bring devices onto the network, uh, one of the easiest solutions is to just block that outbound web access, right? And then uh, pop up a message with your proxy that says, hey, you know, we require you to use the Spikes browser in order to use the web. That would be a really safe way to uh, uh, secure your network from those threats and even uh, provide that service to the people who bring their own devices. Uh, and then what I see a lot of people do is they just put those uh, BYODs on a separate network that's off the corporate uh, and, and away from uh, the intellectual property and the assets. Yeah. Ooh, that's a big challenge. Yeah. Because you've got to convince a lot of people that your browser is superior. Yep. Um, do you need the browser to have any access to this technology or could it still, could I get some protection by using Chrome or Safari or Firefox or yeah, we or actually support running other browsers in our technology, but um, they, since they weren't designed to be run on a remote computer, it creates a little bit of user confusion. So the experience isn't fluid, and, and I really don't recommend it. Uh, we created a new interface designed to be used this way, and so it gives the users uh, a really intuitive uh, way to use the web, and you know, and, and we can support and integrate plugins and make the experience work the way people are used to seeing it work, uh, so that it doesn't feel like it's some weird thing. You know, it, it can be uh, a really compelling experience. I'm prepared to show it to you today too, yeah. so you can get a sense of it. Yeah, can we, Rocky? Can we see uh, this up on the screen? Yeah, let's let's. Uh, cool. So see um, what it looks like. Yeah, one of the first questions I usually get is, well, you know, since it's running remote, it must be awfully slow, uh, and. That's really not the case. So uh, I've brought up a YouTube uh, page here so I can show you an example of a video because that's often one of the things that don't, you yeah. know, don't work well. Uh, big ups to the guys at GoPro for making one of my favorite demonstration videos. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll just play the video so you can see. I mean, the frame rate's high. Uh, I can scroll the page and, and see very clear text uh, as well as, you know, excellent uh, uh, video performance. And, yeah. and this is all done without sacrificing scalability. So now, now we, our little demon is uh, probably adding some uh, latency. So oh, yeah? Yeah, so uh, what you see on screen might not be quite as smooth as I'm seeing on my laptop here. Well, tell them how smooth it is, Robert. It's, it's smooth. <laughs> it's smooth. It's, uh, yeah. it's, so this is actually being hosted on somewhere else yeah, this outside is up, of uh, our VPN? This is on, on our servers up in uh, one of the other, not in Rackspace, apologize for that, but we yeah. started off small in, in our own little data center. and. Uh, it's in California, just here in the Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. but certainly not in the building. And now, so do I have to pay a service fee then to use your browser? Because you're having to pay for cloud computing service. You know, secure cloud browsers are, are, are a little more common. They kind of exist. I can name a couple of companies you can go to and find those, but this is designed to run on your premises. So uh, I offer it as a cloud service for evaluation and for um, certain VIPs. I could give you an account, for example. but. Um, really, the way to be secure and keep privacy is to take this technology and put it on your enterprise network. So we make it available in that form factor, and that's, I mean, that's really been successful for us. But uh, certainly, uh, the cloud offering is there, and, and that managed service is of use, and uh, certainly as an evaluation tool, it's really useful. That's pretty cool. Um, your problem as a business challenge is convincing people yeah. to switch, and it, that's a really hard thing to do. Uh, from Chrome or Safari, because you're competing yep. against Google. And sorry, uh, that <laughs> they they spent the last 13 years yeah. of their life working their way into my head. Certainly, and that's a, a really hard problem to um, overcome. And it'll yeah. take time to win people over, right? Yep. Uh, but I think people are are being exposed to the threat of using the web and are getting hacked and are getting fed up with it. And uh, those are the people that will uh, be the early adopters of, of this technology. Now what happens it, it, on Twitter right now, on my direct messages, I, people are emailing me all these stupid mm -hmm. things, right? With, 
What happens if I click one of those links? Yeah, well, uh, you experience, if you do it in, this, in the Spikes browser, you experience a certain level of fearlessness. So I can click anything, you know, any of these shortened links where you really don't know where they're going. Yeah. So uh, what happens if you do it? Them. Well, let's try it. Let's click a link. Uh, that's from Dan Gooden. Took us over to an article on Ars Technica. Thank gosh it wasn't something, you know, not suitable for our audience. <laughs> yeah. No, but, we, we, you know, these links now will grab your Twitter, uh, will go into Twitter and spam and hack the Twitter. So how do I know that that's not happening when I, when I use your browser instead of a Chrome browser? Well, if it was happening, like if there was some kind of malicious code there, um, it would be stopped in its tracks. It, because of the security behind this technology, there's no way for that to be a risk to you. So, um, you know, it may Im impact the browser itself or crash the tab or something, but uh, it's, it's isolated outside the network. So you can't, uh, you know, there's no risk to you as the user and the end user there. Interesting. Yeah. Well, cool. How are you invested? How, how did you guys... Uh... Yeah, we're, we're actually pretty well funded and, and supported by uh, investors here in San Francisco named Javelin Venture Partners. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, you know, yeah, this is a Series A time for us right now. We'll be uh, raising that Series A at the end of this year. Yeah. For uh, uh, how does somebody uh, know that what you're telling me is the truth? A hacker could know, but I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a black hat hacker. I'm not right. going to be able to really test out your claims. So yeah. do you have uh, testimonials or? Yes, good question, yeah. And that's, more will come, right? But we've definitely had, we've had um, analysts do briefings on it and there's uh, uh, a great number of customers that are evaluating it and willing to talk about it. And um, you know that'll all come up on our website and over time that reputation will build. Uh, but currently it's the cybersecurity people who just see by design how secure it is. And, and luckily, uh, it doesn't take a lot of explanation. You know, you, you say, hey, we're doing this uh, in this way, and, and they're like, wow, and you got it to work? Cool. You know, that's the kind of response I get, and uh, mm -hmm. so it's been pretty easy on that front. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for what you're doing, because uh, keeping the web safe is really uh, you're important. welcome. Yeah, I think so. And where do we learn more about it? Spikes.com. Spikes, S-P-I-K-E-S. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you so much. Yeah.